All right. Welcome, everybody, to the show. I got with me the one and only Christine Pearson. Hey, what's up, Christine? What's up, Mitch? Thanks for having me here. Yeah. I, I'm as we to be on your we, podcast. Yeah, we also like to call her Sea God, but that's just on the Self-Perfected podcast. I mean, she's Sea God all the time, but especially on the Self-Perfected podcast. And we go way back now. It's been some years, right? Is that a couple of years? I mean, yeah. Two and a half years. Wow. And it's been really awesome to see. Like Christine is someone who gets it and really lives both purpose and she's grounded in reality. And it's amazing to see. Um, because she's grown faster than most people that I know. And so we're gonna dive into her story. So I'll just preface it. If you're a female listening to this, I know a lot of this will resonate with you. Um, And if you're a male listening to this, this will help you understand women and why so many women you would perceive to them to be crazy. And Christine is a wonderful example of a woman who actually embodies that. So I'm looking forward to diving in. Crazy? (laughs) (laughs) You know, women are crazy. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We'll have to clarify it (laughs) as we proceed, but it sounds good. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so th- let's let's use this as a jumping off point. You know how mm-hmm. guys tend to think women are crazy. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know many women that are actually a good example of just being like grounded and stable, except for you, obviously the women in like the self-perfected community. Right. But right. in general, like women are crazy is how guys at least say it. And don't even women say that about each other. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so what? let's just dive into that. Like, why do you think that's a thing, Christine? And how can people make sense of that? Well, I think most people can see that the world is really unstable. And every like, it's not just even women, like guys are really unstable, women are unstable. And then the instability specifically for women comes from this point of like, I need to control everything in my life, like whether it be my relationships, my career, my money, all that kind of stuff. So I think, I mean, other than like, obviously what caused that was like how you grew up and then Mm -hmm. the school system and then, you know, all the different things that uh, your experiences that affected or at least um, influenced you throughout along the way. Like then that (laughs) then that leads you to a point of just really trying to make it work in this reality and then trying to navigate other people's craziness, you know, (laughs) So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's this giant, like, mess that we're sorting out. Um, and there's one other thing, too, just before we, like, really dive in is, uh, so Cameron had shared with me this, and maybe you saw it, too, is in that group chat we're in, of that guy talking about population collapse. Okay. Did you watch that one yet? I didn't. Okay. It's, like, a very recent episode on, I don't know, some other podcast, but it's this guy who's talking about how there's a lot of trends showing that like certain countries around the world, like South Korea, Japan are set for full on population collapse. And Uh there's a huge uh, narrative right now of like, Hey, don't have kids. Kids are polluting the planet and all that. Um, So I just want to share this for the listeners is like, there is a way better way to look at having kids, raising an awesome family, having, you know, being really cool parents actually being proud of like bringing kids into this world and raising them well. And um, just shout out to Christine and Drake because they got baby Hazel on the way for yes. I don't know, sometime in August, apparently. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that'll be cool as well for um, in this conversation, just like interweaving that of there's so much doom and gloom bullshit happening in the world. And yeah, people just afraid of having kids or not want to take that responsibility or they're like, Oh, well, when I'm 35, I'll figure it out. So yeah. how did how did you come to that within yourself of like being excited about having a kid and then take us through the journey of Christine? We, we want to hear it. Yeah, I mean, so I grew up um, in like a s- relatively stable home in terms of my parents were together. My mom was a stay at home mom, actually. So I actually got to live with my mom. I still went to school, but I saw the family structure and like how, you know, at least within the context or like the means that my parents lived, it worked. You know, my dad was able to provide, my mom was able to stay home. Um, Really, my mom just didn't trust the daycare system. So she was, cause she, she, she's from Venezuela and it's very much like your family raises you, not the institution. So that was cool. 
So I always knew that I wanted a family. Now, moving on, like with, you know, how things progressed in my life, um, that definitely, there was a definitely that little bit of doubt, you know, and what's really being impulsed right now, what you were just saying about people not wanting to have kids. Like I started to think that way too, because I saw what was going on in the world. You know, things were going crazy. It was like, how could I bring kids into this world with all this fucked up shit going on? Um, and how was I going to raise them effectively? How was I going to be able to afford kids? Cause you know, kids are, you know, kind of like a liability. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, I mean, I definitely kind of went through the ups and downs of like, okay, whether this was going to happen, um, and when I wanted it to happen, especially like trying to figure out my career along the way. But now obviously I'm very grateful for having found this, you know, self-perfected techno tutor, all these different groups that we're a part of to now be really stable and like, okay, no, I understand the value of having kids. I want kids. Um, and I know how to raise my kids effectively. And I have the support system to raise um, our kids effectively too, which I think is a lot of the insecurities that people have with wanting kids. It's like, well, I could bring kids into this world, but A, like I'm going to be really stressed about money, all these different things, right? But when you have the right tools and the right support system and you're clear on like how you want to raise them, I mean, all that stuff then becomes obsolete. It's like, okay, like, why don't we do this? And I, at the same time, it's like, well, what are we going to leave behind for the next generations? Because there's still people coming into this world anyways, you know? Mm, so. Wow. So that's also like, I was thinking like, okay, well, if everyone thought that way, then what's going to be left of earth? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So ever so. since you were young, did you always have a sense of like, purpose? I mean, cause even from when we met, like you were clearly looking for like, what is the truth of life? Like you want, was, was that always a thing or was that at, so, at a certain point? Yeah. Um, so I'll just start with like kind of where my personal development journey started, which was actually pretty young. Um, I grew up, um, so when I was about 14, I was in probably one of the worst health states like I'd ever been in in my whole life. Um, I was extremely overweight. I was having a lot of digestive hormonal issues. I had like all of the things of like teen angst, you know, um, mood, irritable, like all the things. Right. And um, <clears throat> by that point, I honestly thought that I was just one of those unlucky people. I was like, oh, I'm just one of those people that like things, bad things are just happening to me. Like food doesn't like me. Like those are the thoughts that were going through my head. I guess I'm not like the other girls where I can just be skinny and like eat whatever I want and all this stuff. Um, and yeah, so I had gone through like a pretty traumatic like puberty experience, believe it or not. And um, so it was just like all this compounded to a point where I was like so miserable in my body. Um, and then it's just so happened that that same year, I went to this like youth health forum at a co college and it was actually the naturopathic college. Um, so for those who, who don't know, like naturopathic medicine, it's like an alternative healing. It's a uh, like modality of, they kind of practice like a medical doctor, but it's like all like herbs, supplements, all that kind of stuff. Right. So then I realized through going up to this, uh, forum, that uh, they kind of exposed a lot of like the medical system and just like how it's like very abusive. It only treats like the symptoms, not the cause. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, because I'd also been told I need to pick a career. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And this is like, I think the best way to help people um, that's not abusive and actually getting to, to the root cause of like people's problems and not just like masking their symptoms. So I took it as a way of like, okay, this is, this is going to be my purpose as well. This is a way that I can help myself. But obviously I was 14 at the time, so not really much I could do like myself, but it got me to like start researching about like food and reading books and stuff like that. Um, so just like over time, uh, you know, then I entered high school slowly, like all, like a lot of my like my weight gain had like gone away. I got skinnier, but that was just through like being physical and like doing a lot of sports. Um, so then fast forward to uh, to university. Um, so I went to the University of Toronto and uh, it's kind of like the Harvard of like Canada kind of thing. Like they make it extremely hard and competitive. So <clears throat> um, anyways, by the time I graduated, I was like, what the fuck was that? 
because I had done the whole like go to school, <laughs> go to university, you know, do the whole thing. And then by the time I was done, I was so defeated because it was it was hard. I didn't get the marks that I needed to like even apply to the naturopathic school. Um, I felt cheated of these like last five years. I was like, I put in so much effort and so much work and I don't feel prepared for the for the for the real world world at all. Um, and it was just like this point of like, what am I going to do? Like, I've been literally focused on this, this uh, goal of becoming a naturopathic doctor. Like, what am I going to do now? Um, so I had to reroute and basically like find something else. So <clears throat> um, I took a year off at that time. And then I started looking like, okay, like, well, how can I still be involved in the uh, like alternative medical field? Um, that's maybe then not naturopath other than like, okay, I could maybe redo the courses that I need to get into the school. So then I started investigating some other stuff. So there was like acupuncture, herbal medicine, all these other things. And then that's when I found, um, uh, holistic nutrition. So I found the, this, there was a school, it was like the Institute of Holistic Nutrition. They had a few campuses in Toronto and I was reading over like, kind of like the whole premise and you know, the values of the school and everything. I was like, oh, this actually aligns perfectly with like what I wanted to do with naturopath, like helping people heal through food. Um, so I decided to enroll in that. And um, so that actually then, so it, it's so funny, actually, by this point, I had actually gotten your wish is your command. Mm. I had no idea what to do with it. <laughs> And so I listened to it and I was like, all right, I'm going to keep this in my back pocket. Maybe one day I'll need it. Cause like, by cause also by this point, um, I was so impulsed with like, you just need to go to school, get a job, have a career, have a career with benefits, like nothing in the realm of like making your own business. Right. So it wasn't until I entered the natural or sorry, the holistic nutrition school that I even got introduced to entrepreneurship where I was like, oh, this opens up a whole like new sphere, this whole realm of like income potential and like things that I can do like with, you know, with my career and all this kind of stuff. Right. Um, so anyway, so started that. And then that's also when I got more into like my spiritual journey, you know, like um, kind of really, it was funny because like my whole university was like very science and like kind of seeming this like seemingly logical way of thinking. <laughs> and then I like escaped all of that and was like, all right, let's go like the total opposite or seemingly opposite of like, let's do like spirituality stuff. Right. And then that's when I got more into like law of attraction and everything. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, once I graduated from the uh, holistic nutrition school, um, I was like, okay, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start a health coaching practice. Um, I started, uh, taking on like one-on-one -on -one clients. I had moved out by that time as well. Um, so I was like really focused on like being this strong, independent woman. Like, I don't need a man to take care of me. I got this, you know, I can create my own money, all this kind of stuff. Um, so again, like I just was super hyper-focused on like, I need to m make a career for myself kind of thing. Um, and kept kept that up for like a couple of years. And really, I mean, like I spent so much, I'm probably like you, I don't think I went as deep as you, but I spent so much money on courses on like how to start a business. I got a business coach. I like was trying to be the social media influencer and like this digital. And I, the goal was to be like this digital nomad where I could just take my business and like work from anywhere and like be this, you know, super influential person that everyone wanted to, wanted to be or be around, um, which was just so ungrounded in like reality and like what was actually happening in my life, which is hilarious because eventually I like tried to quit my job basically to, to then take my business full on. And keep in mind, this is like while I was moved out. So because I have no business acumen at all, no one in my family has a business. I don't have any business programming. It literally just like fell apart. Like I, I got to a point where I ran out of money. I had to move back home and my like, uh, and just kind of put everything on hold because I had like 
accumulated a bunch of debt. I just had no like solid system of income or whatever. So I just needed to ground myself and get myself back on my feet. And that was like probably and like the next, like after university, that was a low point. This was like my next like big like shakeup of like, holy crap, like what am I going to do now? Um, Because it was so funny. I had moved out of my parents and they thought I was never going to come back once I moved out. So like my room was gone. Everything they had, they had like converted my old bedroom into my dad's like office or something now. So like I literally had to move back into the basement. So it was just like a rough, rough time. And I started, and so anyways, they were, they were also like, you're crazy. Like, we don't know what you're trying to do right now. Like we told you (laughs) basically like, we told you like, you need to get a job and all this kind of stuff. And you're trying to do all these other crazy things. Like what's going on? So it just caused like a lot of conflict and a lot of more instability. And I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so yeah. And then, so a- after I'd moved back home, basically uh, I got a job so I could like, okay, get some finances in order, got cre- cleared a bunch of my debt. And then this leads us now into 2019. I forgot to like add dates, but this is now mm. like 2019. And um, once I had like 2020 started, I like had actually gotten everything, like I'd made enough money where I like cleared all my debts, everything was good. I was like, okay, like, let's try this again. I'm going to move out, going to start this like influencer lifestyle again, but maybe not go so crazy and and, like try to do all these like things, like let's actually do it the right way. And then COVID hits. And now I'm, you know, the whole world shuts down. I'm out of my parents and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do now? Because living in your parents' basements isn't so like, uh, influential you know what I mean isn't so like <laughs> oh I'm gonna influence a bunch of people like through social media to live this lifestyle so I was really like okay now what um and yeah so then that year I I mean COVID I mean I think a lot of for a lot of people it was like a rough it was a rough time in terms of just being isolated and not having any sense of like what the fuck's going on um and I did it's just funny because I did share because I was in the holistic nutrition, like alternative health field. I was totally one of those people, like super vocal, like putting stuff about like, we're not focused on prevention. This is all bullshit. Like how can you be saying that masks work, all this kind of stuff. And I lost followers. I lost friends. Like people stopped talking to me because of like the stuff that I was posting. And I was just like cooped up at home, like, like totally depressed, you know, <laughs> smoking a ton of weed um which yeah th- throughout this all- whole process as well I use like I think weed was like my main coping mechanism um and just kind of was completely lost because I, I, again I wanted I had this idea of like what I wanted in terms of uh having a business and just being able to sustain myself in some sort of way financially and it just like not working out because I'm like I know I'm not equipped for a job I don't want like a normal like corporate job I don't want to work at like retail or in at that time I was doing serving and that wasn't even available because at least I had some flexibility in like how I could you know do other things but that wasn't available now because of COVID so it was really like okay what am I going to do so then um anyways I guess this all leads up to basically like when I found self-perfected, which the reason why I mentioned your wishes, your command is that's then kind of what started. I st- I was listening to your wishes, your command uh, later on in 2020. It was, it was like around fall with a mutual friend. And then that's how we found the group was through this guy who knew Jessica. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, he we asked about uh, the Global Information Network somehow knew that Jess was in it and then um she mentioned self-perfected and then yeah found self-perfected and I was like okay these people I like these people I I need these people help me (laughs) (laughs) what did you notice then so so from the group because I know a lot of people have had very similar background you know a lot of searching a lot of failed things so when you then found like self-perfected and all this and you heard about the purpose what, what, like, what did that do for you? Well, f- first of all, I saw that people thought like, uh, si- very similar to me. So especially in terms of like the pandemic, I hadn't met, especially like a group of people other than my holistic nutrition friends and like that, like the health, 
alternative health field kind of people talk against COVID. So when I saw you guys speaking like that, I was like, okay, these people, there's something up with these people. Second was um, just seeing like, I remember, I guess seeing you and Jess and just the way that all of the different relationships that were kind of um, like, I, cause I guess like Asif was in there at that time with Maylat and all this kind of stuff. There was all these like different couples and relationships. And I could see that people were like bonded in a certain way that I was like, okay, like there's something here also because um, it was a bunch of young people who actually valued like real friendship and like connection. So I was like, this is interesting because you don't see many young people, like everyone's all about themselves these days, you know, and no one wants to commit to anything, whether it be like a romantic relationship or just a friendly relationship. It's like, everyone's just kind of doing their own thing. And um, I like, I grew up in Toronto, which is that big city vibe, you know what I mean? So it's like, everyone's literally just like hustling and bustling, doing their own thing. So I really liked that aspect of it as like the community. Um, and then after, I guess, like the purpose, when I saw that this was a group that actually wanted to change the system and they, there was a clear, at the time I didn't realize it, like when I first got into it, but like, there was a clear purpose of like, this is why we're meeting. Like, it's not just about our own personal development. It's like, this is personal development to change the world. And I was like, okay. Again, these people have something here that I'd never heard before, but I've been kind of looking for because um, even with like all like the health stuff that I wanted to do, like I always knew I wanted to help people. I wanted to make an impact, um, especially then when I saw like how uneducated people were with health and nutrition. So it was like, okay, there's like a lack of education and I feel like this is my, but at the time I was like, this is my niche. Like, this is how I'm going to help people is through health, nutrition, and empowering them to take responsibility for their own lives, but just within the health sphere, right? It didn't encompass like every aspect of your life, you know? So yeah. So I guess to answer that question, that's, that's what it would be. Um, okay. So yeah, then you came in the group because I remember when you when you arrived and I was like, oh, she seems cool. And then you jumped right into Techno Tutor. And what did you notice from that too? I remember um because you were talking about like holistic health and how a lot of the holistic mentality or the philosophy of it is like getting to the root. How, how I remember you said something, but I want to hear it in your own words of like, how did you see Techno Tutor helping holistically? Well, I think literally you used those exact words to, with me, Mitch. Like I, we got on a phone call and you were describing how Technotutor worked. And I must've told you about my myself because you literally said Technotutor gets to the root cause or like to the root um, cause of your programming, like mm. where, where that your programming comes from. It's like that unconscious stuff that you got from when you were a kid. It's like, mm. that's what Technotutor solves. So I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense. Like, this is why I haven't been able to make money. I haven't been able to start a business. Like, I don't have any of this uh, unconsciously programmed within me. So if I want to change that, you know, within the uh, context of where I am now, this just makes perfect sense. Like, how else am I going to tap into this? Because, I mean, I've heard, I had tried affirmations. I tried meditations. I tried, like, I don't even know what else. But just all that, you know, all the stuff that's in like the spiritual law of attraction side of things, visualization, like all that stuff. Putting a string around you. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently that's a thing. (laughs) um, Yeah. Story for another time. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Like all the stuff that I guess uh, when you're going, when you're kind of in that personal development world, but it's kind of more in the woo woo spiritual side of things. Like I'd tried all of that stuff, but clearly it wasn't working because uh, I was just missing that really fundamental point of I'm I'm just uneducated on how to actually start and run a business. Mm-hmm. And like, obviously that was also within my, uh, my thinking at the time, which was I need to start the business or I need to run the business and I need to create the business, right? Because obviously that has shifted now. I'm, mm, I'm, wow, <laughs> wow. Would would you uh, 
Would you say you had some of the like feminism programming of that? Cause you were saying earlier, like the strong independent woman thing, but like, how did yeah. you notice in that evolve? Cause yeah, I've, I've seen that shift a lot. For sure. Like, I think I just accepted and allowed a lot of, uh, like just the way that society has progressed or what we call progression, I guess you could say is everyone's just accepted that, oh, life is more expensive. Both people have to work. Um, women want to work like all these different points of, um, this is just what we do now as a society, like both parents work, you know, because you have to sustain a certain lifestyle and, um, like there's just no other choice basically like how are you going to survive how are you going to live if you can't work or if or if you uh don't create make your own money Mm -hmm. um especially when you're in the process of like still getting into a relationship finding a partner you know you have to find some sort of way to survive so i just kind of accepted that oh no there's there's you know now there's ways that women can work and also have a family. Like, this is how I kind of rationalize it for myself is I'm going to have my thing. My husband will have his own thing. And then we'll just come together at dinner time on vacation sometimes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like this is just how my life was, you know, going to look like. And it's just interesting because, like I said before, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. So I saw that it was possible for one person not to work. I'm, the only reason why my mom uh, ended up getting a job was after my brother and I left, like we weren't around to take care of, like we were old enough in high school, all that kind of stuff. So she just kind of got a job to occupy her time and just having a little bit of extra like pocket money. But it's interesting because she, uh, because her and my dad both came from um, South America, like and countries that, you know, not, I mean, I would say Guyana because that's where my dad's from as a third world, but Venezuela is now a third world country, but it wasn't at one time. It was very affluent and very like, you know, they had a lot of money, um, but it was very much like you go to school and you get a good job. And, um, and then if, you know, once they had left Venezuela and came to Canada, it was like, okay, now we're in a country where there's opportunity. So now you really take that opportunity and get a good job and get benefits and like all this kind of stuff. So she always, <laughs> even though she never went to school, she impulsed me with, you have to go to school and you have to get a job and um, make sure that it has it's a job with like good benefits and that you get good vacations. Like, so, it, so it was very much like, not just from, like society, it was also coming from my own mother that I was like, no, I have to be this independent woman. Um, because I guess like my parents used to joke, but it was like, my mom would, would say things to my dad of like, you better not leave me because I'm, I will literally be on the street if you leave me kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it was Mm -hmm. also this kind of like, um, like thinking of like thinking of things in like the worst case scenario, it's like, you don't want to be left with nothing. So you better take care of yourself in the case that, I don't know, someone like your husband is going to leave you apparently one day, you know, which is then at the same time, like what kind of a relationship would that be if that, that were the case? So, um, so then how that changed really was after I got into this group when I realized that I don't have to like I don't have to put myself in that situation of thinking of things in the worst case scenario first of all and then second um when you actually find a partner that has the same purpose as you you like then then there's no more of this like oh you have your life I have my life we can actually work together and create something even bigger with you know the one goal purpose that we do have and with that, like for, and then for me wanting to take on the purpose of techno tutor and um, I guess like getting education into the hand, like every, you know, have give everyone access to this education or whatever. It was like, okay, like I can, I want to be able to build this business because it just makes sense. Um, and then obviously like seeing what was possible within the relationships that were already in the group that were doing this 
like not just you, like, but Cameron and Katie and like Avery and his wife, like, you know, there was other people also doing it. So I was like, okay, this is possible. Like, I want to do this too. And then that just opened up the whole point of the, like, instead of shitting on feminine feminists or, or like the, not the feminists, the feminine roles, because that's also been really downplayed. It's like, well, what are you just going to be like some housewife that stays home, watches the kids? Like you bring no value to society, basically. Like instead of looking at it like that, which again was like all this feminist programming that people have around like just being a woman and like um, not seeing their role as valuable, um, realizing that, oh no, like the mother's role is very valuable. It just doesn't have a monetary return in the same way that a business or a job does but I don't have to play into that or I don't have to participate in that belief or in that, you know, that perception of like how people see women. Um, So, yeah. So, I mean, I had to face all of that, like, you know, especially after I got techno tutor of like realizing a lot of the stuff that I was holding on to and putting all this stress on myself to, to like make things work within the business and try to make money and all this kind of stuff was really unnecessary if I just found the right partner to be able to, you know, do all the things that I wanted and actually have it all, but not have to do it all essentially. (laughs) Yeah. So then you and Drake started your relationship, you know, he pursued you. And I I remember then when you went to go visit him in Florida and that was then really cool to see. So like, what was that journey then once you and Drake really decided to have a relationship? Yeah, I mean, um, Drake, like you said, pursued me pretty actively um, as soon as I came into the group because he was doing the the member requests, right, for self protection. <laughs> but he saw exactly like right when I came in, um, <clears throat> and it was cool though because, like I said, it, it was everyone in the group was super friendly. So, um, and I really liked just like kind of the vibe of the group and what everyone was sharing. So Drake was just another one of those people that I was like, no, he's like, I mean, he's clearly very involved. He was running the call. He's, he still is like running the calls with you guys. So, um, you know, this guy's serious about what he's doing and really wants to help people. So we created a bond and everything. Um, when I first got in, like we would have regular phone calls and stuff. Um, and then it got to the point, like when I got my distributorship, then when that's when Drake was I guess, I guess, I'm not going to put words in Drake's mouth, but I guess that's when he was like, oh, she's also committed to this purpose and wants to do this. She would make a perfect fit for a partner for myself. Um, so Drake just really laid it out plainly exactly what he wanted in a partner, in a partnership, in a relationship, what he wanted for his like future wife and mother and or the mother of his like uh, future children. And it was it was cool. Like I definitely applauded him for like the clarity that he had. Um, and I will not lie. Like the first time that he presented this to me, like I was so just working through my shit that I said, no, I was like, this sounds great. And I literally said to him, I was like, this sounds great. Um, just not with you. Like not right now. Like I, I can't commit to something like this. Um, but, but the reason why I'm sharing that is that it definitely made me, um, start questioning all the stuff that I was holding on to with within relationships and my current view of relationships and, you know, relationship, a relationship that I was trying to pursue that wasn't going anywhere. You know what I mean? Like that was also part of the reason why I rejected Drake's initial offer because I was trying to make it work with someone else that was not interested in me at all. Um, so it was really like, uh, this is just like a, a, another crucial moment within my process of, okay, what do I actually want in a relationship? Um, and who, like the person that I want to be with, like who, like, what does that actually look like practically? Um, and, you know, letting go of all these like fantasies of and imaginations and, you know, cause we all get programmed with like Disney princess shit and all that kind of stuff. So it's just like, you know, questioning all of those things. Um, and then really just coming to the point of, uh, well, at the time I was also 20, like 28 or 29. So I was like, you know, pushing 30 and I was like, okay, if I'm serious about getting my life together, 
getting into a relationship is definitely one of them because if I want to have a family, which at the, which now by this point, I'm like, I definitely want to have a family. I'm going to have to start like that starts right now in terms of even just finding the partner. Right. So I need to get this point um, figured out. Um, and then sure enough, like within a couple of months, I reached back out to Drake and I was like, Hey, let's chat. Because when I, after I rejected his initial offer, uh, we stopped talking and we both kind of went about our own separate things and didn't chat for a while. So then I kind of, I was the one who actually like reconnected and said, Hey, like, let's catch up. I haven't spoken to you in a while. He had also just visited Cameron and Katie in Texas and hung out with their kids. And I, I, th- I thought that was super cool. Cause you know, they're, they're, um, you know, they're showing what's possible with TechnoTutor with their kids. So I'm like, it must be so awesome to see, you know, be in person with them. Um, so that was, start- that's what started that back up. And then within a couple of months of us just kind of like having regular phone calls again, um, I got a lot of support from the Ottawa self-perfected crew as well. Like I was, cause at the time, like I said, I was living in Toronto so I used to go visit them and they really helped like helped push certain points within myself because they saw I was serious about changing. So they would challenge me all the time. Like, you know, what are you doing to find a partner? Like, do you have any prospects? Like, What's going on? So when I, I had reconnected with Drake, I had uh, gone back to Ottawa and um, they had asked me, like, so are you talking to anybody? Which I really wasn't talking to anyone other than Drake at the time. I had tried to go on like dating sites and or one of those dating apps or whatever. And I pitched like, I don't know, Mitch, probably like 50 or 60 guys on like self-perfected and techno tutor. And one of them, like out of all of that, like I had one date set up and then the guy ended up having kids, all this stuff that I didn't even find out until after the fact that I'd like agreed to this date. So I was like, oh God, like this is going to, this is a nightmare in terms of like finding a partner that's like not in the group. But anyways, it just, so it just so happened that, uh, but I was talking to Drake and then um, finally I got pushed again, I'll shout out to the Ottawa crew. Like I was challenged again to say like, if you're even thinking about thinking about Drake in any sort of way of, of uh, considering like a relationship with him, you should go meet him just to kind of get clarity on this point. So you're not at least wasting your time thinking about this, you know, in some sort of fantasy or imagination or whatever. Um, And anyways, like, what do you have to lose? Like you go to get to go to Florida, you know, like (laughs) you meet someone from self-perfected, like worst case scenario, you guys are just friends and we're all in the group together. You know what I mean? It's not going to like, what's the worst that could happen. So um, yeah. So then when I went to Orlando or when I came to Orlando, um that was like june of 2021 um drake and i met we hit it off uh like we had already like i already knew we had uh like good connection just from our like zoom talks but in person it was like solidified it was like oh okay like we're actually cool together and then like like i said from before um drake's initial offer Like I already knew what I was going to get myself into if I was going to commit to a relationship with Drake. So we, so, you know, as soon as we saw that we were a good fit together, um, I basically was like, okay, like, let's do this. Um, Like I I know, I know exactly what to expect kind of thing. And um, so I planned for like 10 days at that time. And then I ended up staying for an extra month. And uh, we just kind of like worked together where I was like supporting Drake in, in the business. And we were just really looking at, okay, like how are we going to get our lives going now? Um, since we know we want kids, we know we want to get married. We know we want all these different things. Um, so now it was about just getting all that stuff in order, really. Um, and then I came back home to Toronto for a little bit, got some more things, and then just ended up going back to Orlando. And I haven't left, <laughs> I haven't left since. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. Cause that, <laughs> it just shows like when you have that desire to have the relationship and you just get around the group, it's like you make it happen, you know? So. Oh yeah. And it's just crazy. Cause, um, I, you know, I had a few past relationships. I didn't have many because I, I was one of those like 
long-term relationship kind of people where I was always considering someone for like a long-term thing. It wasn't all, I was never into like short relationships just for fun kind of stuff, you know? So I always think about how, or I used to think about how different Drake was from the previous guys that I dated because there's always this point of, even if they were older than me, there was like a lack of drive and motivation to get their lives together, you know? And there was really like no direction in the relationship. And so like eventually it would fall apart because I was the type of person that I was like, no, I want to get here and I want to do this. And, you know, I, I like I, I would really be like that go-getter of let's go on vacation. Like whatever it is that I wanted, like that's what I was pursuing. But I was always like dragging them along with me versus them taking the initiative of doing the things that we wanted to, we supposedly wanted to do together. And then eventually it would just fall apart um, because I would just get frustrated or my first relationship, like we were just hanging on for so long that it just was like, okay, we're so miserable together. Like we have to end it. Um, And then the relationships that came after that, it was just like, this isn't going anywhere. Like we're not, um, yeah, there's just like no direction to the relationship. Um, And then when, you know, when, things worked out with Drake it was like oh wow like this is actually what I've been looking for someone who's like I'm gonna put it this way it might not sound right but someone who's actually like a little bit smarter than me (laughs) you know like someone who actually can take real direction because like it's and it's not to diminish like a female's intelligence or my own intelligence but it's like if you want someone to lead you you kind of want them to know a little bit more than you do of like where you're headed, you know? And that's something that Drake hundred percent brings to our relationship. It's like just that leadership of, you know, this is where I'm going. I might not know how everything is going to work out or how this is going to happen or yeah, just like the how of anything of like what the things that we want, but our vision and our purpose is clear. Like we're going to figure it out along the way. Um, and like, I mean, like that's just put, brought so much like ease and safety and like security to my own self and just how I feel in in terms of, uh, the relationship, because then it's like, I'm not worried about, like, I don't know. It, It just like takes away a lot of the, um, I guess like doubt and insecurity that you have sometimes or that I've had in the past in other relationships, because I was like, fuck like this isn't going anywhere or like you know how am I how am I gonna trust this person with like my kids for example where like with Drake it's like that was like a no-brainer this I'm like this guy could totally like please have my babies kind of thing you know what I mean (laughs) so um like I want you to be the father of my children so that's really cool because I feel like that's something that a lot of women um deny from themselves is like actually wanting someone that they can be equal to. Cause that's really Mm -hmm. what it is. It's like, we're equal in the relationship. It's not that he's better or I'm better or whatever, but it's like a lot of the times we're just competing with the other person in like a very subtle way. And because of the way that, for example, men or guys in in society now are, are raised, it's like no one's taking even like clear or any serious direction in their lives or it's like very materialistic or superficial. So it's like, um, yeah, it's like realizing, you know, it might seem old school traditional, but there's a reason why like that is there or why they call it old school or why they call it traditional, because there is a sense of that it does work. It's just now, how can you redefine it in a way that's um, in the best way possible for both people and not in an abusive way or in a way that diminishes one person versus the other. Does that make sense? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really well said. Um, so I have a, a few more questions for you here. One is, uh, so for the women out there, like what advice would you give to a woman now when it's 2023, the world's going fucking crazy, you know, all these changes are happening, culture's changing, all that, like, what advice would you give to a woman out there hearing this? Um, well, 
you haven't joined self perfected. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, like, I guess that's for people that are either in the group or maybe joining the group or something, but definitely joining this type of community, our community, not even this type of community, our community, because where else are you going to get like the real truth of what's possible in a relationship? I've never seen it anywhere. And you're just going to be running around in society in your own life, trying to figure it out, trying to make things work, trying to be this like strong, independent woman, trying to make it work with all these boys, because they're not even men, all these boys that also are trying to figure themselves out. And everyone's just frustrated because no one's actually taking their life seriously um, because they don't have real purpose. And everyone's just super immature. Like there's just so many things wrong with where people are currently at, especially in the phase of finding a relationship and everyone's so traumatized quote unquote from uh, previous relationships or their own relationship with their parents that then they start recreating those things. So there's a lot of um, non-commitment and infidelity. Like there's just so, you know what I mean? Like so much that it's just, um, it's frustrating being like, I, I can't even imagine being in the dating scene right now. Like I was already frustrated back when I was single trying to build my business, which I just avoided it altogether. But now it's, I just feel like it's getting worse, especially now because there's so much divide between men, women, race, this, and whether you believe in this thing, political view or that, polit- like it's just so much garbage it is so irrelevant <laughs> to even just the foundations of a relationship. Um, you know, it's, it's like, obviously you need to agree on certain values and certain, and obviously within our group, it's principles. Like you have to agree on living within a set of principles and agreements. So um, yeah, like, I mean, if this could reach like people that are just kind of watching definitely just join the group and reach out to, you know, come on the Friday night hangout. Like that's literally what I did. Um, I, I, I can say that I was searching for this by joining other groups. Cause I had previously just from my health background, I had been approached by so many MLMs, like you name any type of supplement, essential oils, um, skin and hair, hair care products that are supposedly natural, like every type of MLM that's in that kind of sphere, I got approached by. And I just never felt like any of those really resonated with me just because I was like, (sighs) they're all very, um, like the way they run those groups is very much like, uh, I mean, I guess you could use the word culty, but it's like there's just this uh, culture within an MLM, especially because a lot of them are MLMs, um, where they uh, like it's like this rah rah, but like about fucking supplements. Like I just right. can't like, wrap. Who fucking cares? <laughs> <laughs> like sure, you take supplements, great. <laughs> right, but how? <laughs> then you go to your job from nine to five, and you hate your life. <laughs> right, like I I just could never get behind that. Like I'm gonna use these supplements religiously every single day. And this is what I'm going to eat, live and breathe. You know what I mean? Like it's just, that just never resonated with me at all. Um, So like, it's just, anyway, so I guess what I'm trying to say is this group kind of encompasses now everything that we've, uh, that we actually really need fundamentally in in our lives, our personal lives, society, the world. It's, a, you know, your personal development, but also family, community, um, money, like all the things that you want in life that will actually make your life amazing, but without all the unnecessary stuff. Like who cares what kind of supplements you use or who cares what kind of clothes you wear, really? Like, um or like what music you like or, and you know, all that kind of stuff. It's like, that stuff is all secondary when it comes to really establishing like a solid, I guess, like foundation for yourself, you know? And um, 
and especially like I use the word foundation because how can you build anything up when you don't even have like your base core basic needs met and as much as some people are you know if you live in a first world society in a first world like in North America or something it's like you kind of have it but it's not really all there because we we don't have the emotional support we don't have the tools to like help us work through things like there's other little components that are still necessary so i mean yeah i guess like however anybody could find this group like just just join this group and participate because that's what that's like so that like i was saying before like that's basically what i did is i just part started participating which through participation it's like um there's that saying that the squeaky wheel gets the oil mm -hmm. it's like if you don't speak up and say that hey i need help how's anybody going to know that you're actually suffering or that you're that you need help or that you need support right like so Otherwise, like no one's going to know that you need that. Um, and I think, I, I mean, like, I was just at a point where I was like, I'm stuck. Someone please help me um, when I first joined Self-Perfected. So I got a lot. So I had a lot of people reach out, but I also wanted, you know, to connect with others, especially at that time. It was so blatantly clear how separated people were because of the pandemic. And it's still like the effects of that is still lingering you know, with people being very lonely and very isolated. Um, a lot of people are looking for meaning, right? So it's like, don't stop that search for what you're actually looking for, which is, I think we're in a good position, Mitch, because it's like people are, are looking for that and people are still searching. So it's like now up to us to really put ourselves out there to share and make sure that people can find this because how else, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have found this if it wasn't for our mutual friend, Lake, who knew Jessica. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. there's going to be, like, some... We're all connected somehow. You know what I mean? There's, like, five or six degrees of se separation. So, somehow, we can reach, technically, reach everybody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just how that's going to happen. It's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that intention day after day after day after day. And you just never give up. And next thing you know, it's, like, turned into this really cool thing. Um, so, what what would you say to a guy listening to this? A guy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess for like, like, I can't speak from a guy's perspective, like in terms of like as a guy, obviously, but I think it's just finding that sense of purpose and clarity. But again, like, you're not going to get that until you find a group that actually has real purpose and can give you that clarity. So again, it, it's like, how can we share this enough so that people start seeing this so that they can, they want to come into our group or want to join something that is fundamentally going to change things. Right. Because I would just say the same thing for a guy too. It's like, don't stop searching and looking because everything that's out there is bullshit. Like whether it be crypto, Forex, um, you know, quick ways to make money. Like that's what everyone's searching for right now. Or like everyone's trying to get into real estate or just like the next thing to like make you a lot of money so that you can have the Ferrari or like the Bugatti or what, you know, as Andrew Tate says, like, like focusing on the material things was only going to get you so far. So if you can make it about, okay, how can I make myself a better person and really take on that personal development, I guess, way of seeing things, because ultimately, again, it's people, people are so caught up in their own self-interest and just the worrying about me. Like, it's all about me. It's like, okay, but we're seeing the effects of people living that right now. And it's ugly. Like it's so brutal how the world is right now because of that mentality that people have. So I think something that I really appreciate about this group and what's really opened my eyes is seeing beyond just my own life. And I feel like for guys, especially, it's like, what do you want to contribute to this world? 
because as men, it's not like, like for women, it's kind of simple in the sense of, but you can contribute in a really, uh, in a way that's going to be felt well after you're gone is like having children because it's like your children will be left here, right? For a guy, it's like you actually have to build and create something, whether it be a business or some sort of legacy of what you did to contribute to society, right? And you making a lot of money through Forex is not going to leave that imprint (laughs) on society. You know what I mean? So, um, so again, it's like taking your pro- taking your process from where you're at seriously to get to a place where you can come into a group like this and realize, oh, this is what I've been searching for. This is what I want. Um, this is how I'm going to leave my legacy behind because I will have a family with real principles. Um, I will raise my kids to be genius, like and leave behind, you know, leave behind a generate um, a generation that will be able to take care of themselves and not be so messed up by the world. You know what I mean? So I think it's just really taking it for both men and women. It's like, just taking it beyond just yourself and trying to survive and have the best experience. It's like the world's fucked up and (laughs) people just need this type of community because otherwise it's like, we're all fucked and there's going to be no life to, or no world to live in because it's going to be just destroyed by our greed, basically, you know, and, and, uh, you know, some people argue, well, I'm just here for a good time, not a long time. It's like, yeah, well, like, what about all these other kids that are coming in? Like, then what's, what's left for them? Like, how are they even going to have a good time, Mm -hmm. let alone a long time, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. (laughs) I think sometimes too, then like, imagine, that person's like, yeah, I'm here for, for a good time, not a long time. And then let's say like, then they die, but then they weren't certain about what was going to happen. And then they just get reincarnated. And then they're like, they have to like experience the consequence of them doing that. <laughs> right. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's selfishness, but we're here to change that. So my one other question for you, and then you can of course share whatever um, is like, so you're about to be a mom, right? And I've I've noticed this with you know me and Jess having Aristotle and just being first time parents and everything. It's it's so cool. It it's it's one of the most amazing things ever. Um, but with with you and your journey with it, like, what are you most excited for about becoming a mom, and how do you see that fitting into to everything? Yeah, I I mean it's something that I've always wanted, but now it's like, I'm so confident in how I can raise my child that it's like, like, I'm just excited for it really, you know, I'm excited, like what I'm, I'm capable of to actually raise a stable genius child. And it's not something that's, um, like people, you know, when they think of genius, they think it's like, oh, it just, they were just born that way. You know, and and now obviously with what we've studied and learned from the tools that we use, destiny, all that kind of stuff, it's like, sure, every child has the potential to be genius. And some kids will just have a natural proclivity to genius tendencies. But fundamentally, everyone has uh, the genius within them. It just needs to be cultivated from a very young age. And it's just funny because... Um, my mom, like when I used to get to, into arguments with my mom and she would say like, you'll understand when you have your own kids or you just wait till you have your own kids and then you'll understand why I'm saying this thing or I'm doing that thing or whatever. Right. And I mean, that sticks with you because you're like, well, I don't know what's going to happen when I have my own kids. I don't want to be like you, but, um, <laughs> being a parent is one of those things that because you it was you see what the the relationship you have with parenting is created within your first 7 years because you you're being parented right so that's what you're basically unconsciously absorbing 
um, the same thing with like relationships. It's like, that's your first view of really, that's your first interaction with like those first seven years are your, inter- your first interactions with the whole world. And then that's how you live out your life. So we don't realize like when, um, when you start, when you become a parent, if, if you don't know any other way, you will become your parents. Like there's just no question about it. And whether it be you do the exact same thing or you do everything uh, in the in the opposite polarity, you know what I mean? Because you didn't like certain things, it's like, but you but you never actually. Uh, it's it's never a th- from a point of um, certainty of this is the best way to raise my kids, right? It's just out of reaction to however you were parented, right? So, I think I'm just really excited to just actually prove. No, I am certain on how I'm going to raise my kids. And even if I don't know something, I have the support system to be able to do so. Um, So I'm very confident that like Drake and I will be great parents. And even if we make mistakes or whatever, it's not the end of the world because we know how to actually correct all that stuff, especially with the tools that we have. Um, And I mean, like, I'm just excited to have like, I haven't even had my first baby like which is coming in August, but I can't wait to have more because I'm like, this is like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like I'm actually confident in like what we're capable of doing. Um, So yeah, like, like I just can't wait really because I mean, I think for a lot of people to, or for women, especially like this is the point where you really either get to trans, I, I don't like to use the word transcend, but it's like you kind of transcend your ego within Mm. becoming a mom because it's really the point where you challenge the challenge yourself in a way of life is not about me anymore. Like it's about raising this child. Mm -hmm. So I think just showing the world, like I'm excited to show the world like this really cool and effective way. That's not easy, but it is simple and just completely embracing motherhood and not seeing it as like this burden or that I've been robbed of my previous life or that this child is going to, you know, completely, I don't know, like people say the most fucked up shit <laughs> about their kids and, you know, that they need a break and that they, it's parenting is just so hard. And like, again, I'm not saying that parenting isn't going to be hard. I'm sure, you know, like it's, it's probably the one of the most challenging things that you like walk through and face, but I th- I think with the, the things that we know now, it's like the reward because we're already seeing it happen with other kids. What's what's possible of how they can um, like turn out basically is like, like, of course this is worth it. Like why not go through all this stuff um, in order to ensure that my kid is going to be really effective, can communicate effectively and not be so um, influenced by all the crazy shit that's go, you know, that's being impulsed to kids right now, right? Especially with all like the LGBTQ, whatever. Like, I, you know, like we won't have to worry about that stuff because our kids will actually be grounded in reality, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just excited, and like I know Drake's like this is something that Drake's always wanted as well as to like raise kids, so. We're both just really looking forward to it. Um, I mean, yeah, it's like the best. I think that's like, it's like one of the coolest, like best gifts ever that you could give to yourself um, when you actually embrace it fully and realize like how much, um, like how much is in your control in terms of like you get to raise this like being, you know, like how freaking cool is that? And and not, and then obviously now having the opportunity to not mess it up (laughs) or not, at at least not like fuck it up in the same ways that we were all messed up in our childhoods because our parents like literally didn't know any better. Um, but at the same time, it's like no, no excuses to just accept that that's just the way that things are, you know? So, and then I'm excited for, um, like Aristotle to have some more friends, you know, and all the other kids to have lots of friends that they will be equal within, you know? Um, Because again, like if it's just a one-off of one kid being genius, like how is he going to relate to everybody else? So I think that's what's cool as well. It's like our contribution to the world 
is having children because then this is literally the next generation. It's like, this is literally our imprint of when we're gone, who and what we left behind is within our own children. And now that we get to raise them with principles and with a clear path on how we're going to eff- effectively influence and change the system, like that's just even cooler because it's mm-hmm. like, okay, like we're not just going to accept and allow the way that the world is being run right now. Like things do need to change and it's, and not, and I like what Jess said in her recent post. It's uh, it's like making life the way that we're experiencing it normal for everybody, not just for a select few group of people. Mm-hmm. Like we actually want this, want, you know, this certain, um, lifestyle or at least like a comfortable lifestyle accessible to everyone because right now it's like what 20,000 kids a a day die of preventable causes like that's totally unacceptable and how is it that we were just like so we just so happen to be the lucky ones that just weren't in that category like I used to think about that all the time of like how am I in this body right now Mm -hmm. you know and how am I living this life and then like all this other fucked up shit's going on when really it was just a system um, that's just made it that way. Right. And now I'm like, Oh no, but I can do something about that. Or at least, you know, be a participant in changing, making that possible, you know? So yeah. That's awesome. Uh, (laughs) How great is this? How great is this? We get to like make it all happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's super cool. And like, I used to think like, man, like, who am I to be someone that can like, just make, you know what I mean? Like change the system. Like that's such a tall order, but man, like if no one does it or if everyone thought that way, mm-hmm. no one's going to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. 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 It's us as a group and it keeps growing. So yeah. Cool. Any other remarks you want to give? I mean, because you're about to go full on mom mode. So I don't know. I don't know when, when you're going to have, do you time yeah. and space to to drop the bombs so let's <laughs> let's hear what else what else christine spit the fire for us um i mean i guess for anyone listening again just join the group especially if you're on the fence of like what am i doing with my life <laughs> you know because literally what else would you what else would you be doing other than wasting time Seriously. obviously you know and I like like something that I say to people, I'm like, man, if only I had found this when I was like 18 years old or something. And I'm sure you say the same thing too, because we're like around the same age, but you know, then it's cool seeing all the young people coming in, you know what I mean? That they are like 19, 20, 21, 22, you know what I mean? The early twenties getting to do this process and come into this group and get really clear on what they want and actually start their lives and not wait till they're 30, you know, to start their lives. It's like, um, man, like how great, like grateful I would have been, but at the same time, like, I'm just grateful to be here now because again, like if I didn't find this group, I'd probably be living in Toronto where rent is ridiculously expensive. So I don't even know if I'd be able to afford to move out. (laughs) Um, probably still trying to start my business and still failing, but trying to make it work and, and then still serving, like doing a serving job or something like that. And, you know, just going from, I wouldn't even say relationships, like trying to be in a relationship with somebody who's just totally not committed. And then just kind of going through that again and again, and just getting frustrated with like, my God, I can't find anyone that actually wants to like build their life, you know, with me and take things seriously and be in a committed relationship so that we can actually like start our lives together. I could just would have been a mess. So, um, so yeah, I mean, other than if there's any way that you're hearing this or seeing this, like, you know, really start questioning and you're and you're already questioning, you know, your life or what you want to do. You know, reach out to Mish, reach out to myself or Jess or whoever. Like, you know, like this, at least to get you 
asking the right questions and getting some form of support or answers, you know, because a lot of the times we also think that we need to figure things out uh, for ourselves or alone. Like I definitely had that before where I was just like this lone wolf, you know, trying to make it work in the system. And like, you know, and obviously, like I said, there's, there was groups that I tried to join, but I was like, I can't get behind this, you know, but um, that's why I then went more into like, just wanting to be this lone wolf thing, because I was like, no one gets me, you know, like, I'm, I'm this like unique person. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I I must be, you know, I must be special, mm. you know, that no, no one just, un, no one just understands me at like this, um, at this deep level or whatever, but that's so, it's, that's so bullshit. And now I know that, um, I mean, when I found self-perfected, I didn't know that's what I was looking for. But now in hindsight, I'm like, oh, this is 100% what I was looking for. Because otherwise, like, you just see, you're, you're just seeing it in real time with, again, with the loneliness thing and like people wanting community and people just being so lost and unstable and like just accepting that, oh, I just have anxiety. I just suffer with depression. I just have all these things that I guess I just have to cope with them for the rest of my life. But it's like, is that really who you were? Especially like even as a kid, like like you weren't born that way. So how can you just accept that now as like your life, that this is just the way that life is? Um, so yeah, just like, you know, being a part of this group is really the only way. I don't know how else to say it. Because <laughs> yeah. then you don't have to accept anything less. And uh, it's just crazy because now that we have the tools like to literally solve, I, I would say virtually anything in our lives, I'm like, there's just no excuses. So if I have a problem, I can't just like go into my pity party of like, mm, like I don't know how to solve this, you know, or like, I'm just, I just want to be sad. It's like, no, I'm, I, now I see that I'm like making the choice to be sad. Because before I would like, especially like being a part of all that spirituality stuff and like astrology and everything, it's like, oh, the moon and the stars are all doing all this like stuff. And that's why it's affecting me energetically. I haven't even thought about that stuff since I came into this group because I'm like, wow, like I was just, I was being at effect to like everything and never actually taking real direction in my life. And um, maybe there is some validity to some of those things, but for the most part, it's just an excuse to not take responsibility. Yeah. So I would say like, that's like my final thing. It's like really taking self-responsibility. Like that's something that I always real like that I realized pretty quickly when it came to my health and learning about nutrition and taking responsibility for my own health. But now it's like how doing that for every aspect of my life you know, like taking full self-responsibility and then taking it now to the next step of like my self-responsibility in relationship to the world, because sure I can make my life work out, but again, there's, there needs to be this bigger purpose beyond myself of, well, how are we actually going to change things if we don't take self-responsibility to change myself, but then also you know, take that into now, how do we change the system to make it what's best for all? Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's keep making it happen. This is great. So <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I'll, I'll see you on the hangouts, of course, and the, the podcast. Yeah, and everything, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Come on the hangouts, right. come hang out. Yeah. Come make some new friends and, yep. you know, find a partner of your dreams, start the family of your dreams, create the world of your dreams, all that stuff. Seriously. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Christine. See you around. All right. Thanks, Mitch.